Okay, we're gonna find the, ma uh, the binding energy of a deuteron. What in the heck is a deuteron? The deuteron is the nucleus of a deuterium isotope. What's deuterium? Deuterium, there are three isotopes, which you should know. You, you should know. Three isotopes of hydrogen. Proteum, proteum, P-R-O-T-I-U-M, proteum, which is what you normally think of with hydrogen, one proton, no neutrons. It's hydrogen one. Deuterium, which is um, the second isotope of hydrogen, which still has one proton because it's hydrogen, but it also has one neutron. And so you have two nucleons, hence the number two, the mass number two. And then you also have the third one, tritium, T-R-I-T-I-U-M, tritium, which is hydrogen three. One proton because it's hydrogen, and then two neutrons for a total of three nucleons, okay? Um, stuff on my fingers. So this is deuterium. So uh, the deuteron is the nucleus of a deuterium, deuterium atom. And that is the mass of a deuter, of deuterium. I got this out of the textbook at the end of chapter 29 and also uh, in, the append in the appendices. They have all these numbers, but these are the masses of the entire atom. But I only want the nucleus, and so I went and I subtracted out the um, mass of an electron. This, again, is the mass of an electron. And I went ahead and subtracted it because I just want the nucleus, and you know that uh, hydrogen only has one electron when it's not ionized. Okay, so I subtracted that out. Now I have the mass of the deuteron, the, the deuterium nucleus. That's the nucleus itself. Well, here's the mass of a proton. This is all in the textbook. Um, the mass of a proton is 1.007276 um, U's, unified mass units, um, and a neutron at 1.008665. Now, because deuterium has one of each of these things, I have to add these things up to figure out their total. So I'm going to add them up to figure out their total. Now, if this, this had been something like carbon-12, I'd, I'd have had six of these, and I'd mul have multiplied this by six to get the total mass of the protons. And I'd have multiplied, you know, however many um, neutrons. If it's carbon-12, you'd have six neutrons. You'd multiply that number by, the same number, by six to get the total number, a, a mass of neutrons, and then add those together. And then I'd go look up in the textbook um, the mass of a carbon-12 uh, carbon atom, all right, and go through this for that, all right. I've already done the uh, math here to save a little bit of time, and this comes out when I add these two up to get the total mass of the individual pieces, the individual proton and individual neutron, you get 2.015941. No, notice that you do not round. Um, don't go round into three significant digits. You have to go out quite a ways to figure out any differences. One, two, three, four significant digits before there's any difference at all. Okay. This is a bigger number, 2.0159 compared to 2.0135. That this is a bigger number. And that's what you'd expect because it, it's smaller when it gets inside. Uh, all right, so to find delta M, the difference between these, delta M is going to be. 2.015941 less 2.0135534. And uh, where did it go? That comes out to be 0 0.002388. 0 0.002388. To turn this into a net, that's, a, that's the, the, the difference in terms of masses. To turn it into an energy, we just have to multiply by that. Because remember that 1u times c squared is that. Well, I don't have 1u. I have that many u's. So to turn that into an energy, that's going to be 0 0.002388 u's times 931.5 mega electron volts 
per, well, that's mass, I'm sorry. Oh, shoot. All right, so using this equation, all right, delta mc squared. Let me just try that again. Delta mc squared. Well, that's going to be uh, 0 0.002388 u's times c squared. All right, it's m delta m times c squared. I'm not going to put in the number for c squared because my conversion factor is 931.5 mega electron volts per 1 u c squared. All right, that equals that. Cancels. So in other words, once you have the thing in um, atomic mass units, just multiply by 931.5, and you'll have the answer in mega electron volts. Because we're calculating an, an energy. Remember, electron volts, that's an energy unit. This comes out to be 2.224 mega electron volts. You'll see that often they will ask that you express this in mega electron volts per nucleon. Per nucleon, if you put that in uh, mega electron volts per nucleon, you divide by the mass number. So that would be that number divided by a mass number of two because you have two nucleons. So if I take that number, 2.224 divided by two, I get 1.112. 1 1.112 mega electron volts per nucleon. That is interesting because the most stable elements are ones that have a binding energy. The greater the binding en energy, by the way, per nucleon, the, great, the, the greater the binding en energy per nucleon, the more stable it is. Um, the, the most stable uh, elements are ones that are above 8. This is quite low, so this is highly reactive. Um, and you can get fusion reactions with this. It's hard when you get above 8, which is where iron is. This is around um, 60 to 80 nucleons in that range. Um, um, iron is a great example of a very stable uh, element because it has a high binding energy for um, the number of nucleons. It's, it's above 8. You go above 8, you're in the world of stability. Um, if you're on either side of that, you, you're going to, you can get nuclear fusion, which happens especially around hydrogen and helium. That's the energy from the sun. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And you can also get nuclear fission, um, splitting the atom uh, at the other side of that, the high, very high, um, what we consider radioactive elements like uranium, stuff like that. Um, but this is quite low. It's quite low. Okay. That's enough of that.